CataractCoach.com. I'm presenting to you our ASCRS 2023 Cataract course. Now, a lot of our international viewers, especially, and even our U.S. viewers, couldn't make it to the meeting. Don't worry. I'm going to have all the cases from that course presented here. One case per day and nine cases total. You can see we had an incredible turnout. Every single seat was filled. People were lining the walls, standing up. There was a line out the door. It was fun. It was exciting. We did 90 minutes and nine cases, about 10 minutes a case. And we had two amazing panelists, Dr. Rosa Bragamili and Dr. Deepinder Dhaliwal. And we had a fantastic time, a lot of laughter and joking, a little bit of poking fun at me, but that's the fun of it. And we all learn together. So let's get started. So here's the first case. First case is super tough, monocular student exfoliation. Yes, an ophthalmologist model, no joke. There's the pre-op, luckily this eye has a normal looking optic nerve. I'm starting the case here, and that's the max pupil cell. Patient jumps around a little bit, of course. Toric lens, you need to have a two diopter of a corneal sill, so a T5 toric lens. Very popular patient, too. Very nice. So I'll put some viscal acid in, I put some epi in the eye, some sugar cane. Love patients who are cooperative like this. Make the main decision. Okay, now, what do I do with this, guys? DP, Rosa, pupil ring, iris hooks, pupil stretching, FSSCS, other. What are you going to do in a case like that? Monocular, 5 millimeter pupil, 88 year old lady. I, I mean, I would use either really either A or B. All right, which is your preference? Well, I like uh, rings. However, this could be a case where you might want to use hooks in case things get a little bit more interesting and you need to look at the zonules a little bit more in little bit more detail. Yeah, a little bit more expansion. So would that you, way, would you hooks put it would four be... hooks or five? That one sub incision, one two. Definitely five. Oh, okay, Rosa. I would do other. What's what's other? So I would put in some intracameral phenylephrine. We did. You at the did. Beginning. Oh, you did at the beginning. These pupils don't tend to move. Okay. So I actually don't like expanding them because then they can become floppy afterwards. Sure. They can bleed because she's older. Uh, she's moving a lot. But what I would do here is I would actually stain the capsule, even though it's not that dense a cataract, to see if your capsule rexus starts to move. Because uh, what you might need are capsular tension hooks for this case. Oh, so you capsule, have capsule hooks even ready? Mm hmm Yikes. Okay, so... <laughs> you guys aren't going to like me because I didn't take any of your advice. It's going to be a rough morning. Yeah. Here's what I did. Okay, well, I'll show you. Well, I didn't want to do a ring or hooks or SICS. So I'm like, I just stretched the pupil out. Oh, God. So oh, yeah. I told the guy, listen, I got a chopper in the other hand to Dasinski. I'll stretch the pupil a little bit. Again, all the videos today are high speed. So this is not, I'm really not this uh, frantic when I operate. Never so stretch the pupil know. out, and that's kind of enough. And now I'll do Osher's viscomedriasis. And so I'll push the pupil a little bit bigger, and I'll get a little bit bigger pupil, so maybe five-ish millimeters now. And of course, I'll take the air bubble out, so I always want a nice video, so I get the air bubble out. And then now I'll get the rexes done. And so I'll be able to make the rexes basically as big as the pupil, or even slightly larger. And so if my forceps are marked off at two and a half and five millimeters for the tips, this really is going to be about five and a half millimeter rexes. A nice generous rexus here. And you can see as I'm tearing it, there's really pretty reasonable capsular support. So it's mm -hmm. not as bad as I thought. And again, again, five-ish, five and a half millimeters. With a little higher dissection. Now, how do you want to do it? You want to bowl it out? You want to divide and conquer it? Stop and chop in the bag, chop in the bag, or chop the Irish plane? Panel, what do you think? So I like to either stop and chop in the bag or just chop in the bag, quick chop in the bag, but keep it all in the bag and do all my chops because then that keeps more of a tension on the zonules. Sure. And if you start to chop and bring them up and out, you can lose some of the tension. Aren't you worried when you split the two halves and crack it that you're pushing too much on the zonules board? Not, not if you're gentle. I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> Deepy, what are you doing? <laughs> I am all about stop and chop in the bag. I like to get a nice groove, crack it, and then turn and just chop in the bag, keep things as inflated as possible in, in the bag. Do you change your parameters at all, like higher infusion pressure or anything, or not? No. Higher infusion well, pressure? I'm just asking. <laughs> okay, so not only does he 
crack to aggressively. <laughs> too no, much. I would want slow motion FACO for this, like Bobby Osher described, where you lower your infusion pressure so you're not getting that movement, anterior posterior movement, and causing zonulars to say they're done. Um, if you do flip the lens out of the bag and chop at the iris plane, then the one thing I would advise in two seconds is fill the bag with viscoelastic so you remain tension on Ooh. the capsule. It's going to be a tough day because you're not going to like me at all. The whole day I think I'm going to be bad. I chose the wrong patties. You guys kind of <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to pick this thing up to the Irish plane. Oh my gosh. Look at oh. that. Dial that thing up. Use the cannula. More viscoelastic. Viscoelastic is cheaper than vitreous. I heard it on cataract code. <laughs> you took my Wait. line. Uh, that's everyone's line. <laughs> you don't encounter me, just what are you talking about? So I chop it here, basically Irish plane, it's two halves now, and I'll break up small pieces. I'm trying not to ride the endothelium too much, and I'm you know, trying to minimize the total fake energy. Luckily for 88, the cataract's actually not all that bad. It's not that dense. So we'll get the pieces up, and again, just further chopping. Again, video shown at high speed. And this looks pretty reasonable, and I'm pretty happy. Not the, as the last pieces come up, I'm really weary of having that floppy bag just come up and hit the FACO tip. Don't ask how I know, but I'll just keep the chopper there in that safe position and kind of protect things. There we go. There are some seats in the front. You don't have to stand up. Come on up. And you could also There's replenish with viscoelastic. You can. That's a good point, too. So come out of the eye, and then now the question is, what Rosa said earlier was a really great point, which is watch the rexus edge. If you're doing this cortex move and you see the rexus moving, oh, that's badness. That's really bad. So luckily, the rexus is not moving. You can see I have marks on the cornea at about the, it's actually 11 degrees is the steep meridian, so against the rule sill. So now filling up the bag, it looks pretty reasonable. And now the question is going to be, well, at this point, what are you going to do? I want to put a CTR in. Yeah, 100% agree. Absolutely. Especially with that toric lens. So I use this method where I'm holding the, the leading eyelet with the Sinsky, get that thing dropped in the bag. It's pretty atraumatic that way. And then now we can obviously put our lens in again. This is a monofocal toric. I think we aim for about a minus a half refractive outcome for the patient. The patient was really quite happy. Any pearls on this for putting in CTR? Do you put it in the same way? Do you do it manually? What do you, how do you like to put a CTR in? I like to uh, do what Josh Teichman taught me to do. And you just put it in and you uh, start the CTR all the way to the left. And I use a right kind of a clockwise CTR. Mm. So you just follow the curve of the capsular bag, one-handed technique. It is so atraumatic and super easy to do. So you don't have to use your second hand. So really and angling it to get that curve of the bag. Yeah, so you just, you start it all the way to the left and then it starts coming out. Makes just sense. Hugs the capsule. It's beautifully gentle. So now after all that, I put some triumphs in low to help quiet it down. So what's it gonna look like tomorrow? DP, our cornea guru. Is that a lot of coronal edema decimal folds? Moderate, mild, no coronal edema, totally clear. Oh man. 88 years old. I don't know what her endo count was. I don't check that. Okay, because I have faith in you and I want to get some brownie points, I'm gonna guess D. Woo, okay. Anyone else? <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of fake with the AC, isn't it, right? So, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. She's elderly. Uh, she had a lot of FACO right near the cornea. I don't, didn't see, it was kind of quick. Did you replenish your viscoelastic? I did not, I'm not that smart. And, um, and so. But I tried to aim more iris plant. I really didn't want to FACO up to the endothelium. I mean, she, I'd say C or D. Boom, and now she was beautiful. I was literally posted on day one. I knew it. And then the best was the, 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 the child said, thank you so much. I mean, I love these notes. I save all of these. So this really Aww. made my day. Yeah, I made my day. In the case was just recently. It was just uh, a month ago. See? So patient did great. Okay, so I got one case done and not too much, you know, trauma for me from the panel. Let's see what the next case is going to be. Any last words on these kind of cases? So you still stick with your original idea? Your last bit of advice here for these? Go stick with hooks? No, no, no. I mean, you know, in this case, obviously, it went beautifully, right? So, so you're saying it's better that I'm lucky instead well, of good? Well, sometimes it's better to be lucky, <laughs> be lucky than, than good. good, right? But, you know, you, you just want to be do your safest procedure in a monocular patient. You want right. control. So if you feel like you can get that control, obviously, the key is never stretch an iphis iris that doesn't dilate. So, so this is a completely different iris sure. in pseudoexfoliation. So if it's small from pseudoex, yeah, you can stretch it. It's okay. But if iphis iris that does not dilate, you try to stretch that and it's just a total mess. Okay, party time. Case